All right, hi everyone, this is Pete here. So today I want to go through the current market situation and some of the stocks that I'm personally looking out for, okay? All right, so if we just look at, for example, the S&P 500 now, okay, so you can see uh, my chart here looks a bit uh, messy, uh, but uh, you just need to focus on one thing. The top is the one-day chart. So that's one year and each candle is by day, okay? And over here, this is the five-year chart where each candle is a week, okay? So if you look, uh, over here, right? So we look at the at, we look at the one day first, huh? So if you look at the one day chart, you can see something quite amazing happening, right? So we had a very nice bounce of the hundred moving average, second bounce, and now it's on its way up, right? So this is usually what we call a double bottom situation. Now I would say this is not a full double bottom. Why? Because usually the double bottom depth, huh? Okay, so for those of you who are not uh, aware in technical analysis, I just explained what is double bottom first. Okay, so usually double bottom basically is you mentioned that the shares goes like this and like this and then head upwards. Okay, so this is double bottom. Now, over here, I would say that this is not a full double bottom. Why? Two reasons. One is we haven't reached the previous high yet. Number two is that the usual, um, uh, the, the usual, uh, drop uh, is usually more than, uh, I would say it's eight percent to be to be really considered a double bottom. Okay, so you can see over here, uh, this is uh this is only about five percent. Uh, okay, about six percent. Okay, all right. So this is not a full double bottom, but regardless, it is still quite amazing. It looks like a very good trend. Whereas over here, okay, uh, you can see that now we are at the twenty week moving average, and we are heading upwards. So. Once again, right, is this a good sign? Absolutely, right? We are off the 200 week. We are now climbing up, right? Now, the bull market always climb on a wall of worries, all right? So there will be always news to come out and tell you, hey, oh, the market is going down, market is going down. Uh, my honest opinion is if you can't uh, tolerate these news, you can't filter them out, just don't listen to them. Shut them off, okay? If you're like me, you are required to read news because when I invest for my clients in the managed accounts plus also teaching, teaching you guys, right, I need to know all this. So I will filter out the noise. I will ask myself, what is the chart telling me, right? So if you look at the chart right now, it is quite clear that we are just above the previous high, right? Just above the previous high. Even even I, if I go to the uh, the daily chart, uh, okay? Let me just bring out the daily chart over here, okay? Even at the daily chart level, you can see if I were to put down over here, right? We are still just above only. We haven't even come... To an extraordinary high level, like you know the previous one, right? From from COVID, uh, can you see the previous one from COVID? It was here, right? So it was all the way, you know, it climbed all the way up. Uh. So when you look at it, this is barely registering. This is like maybe here. Okay, so this is SMB 500. Now let's look to Nasdaq. Okay, so when I look at Nasdaq, also very similar situation. Previously, those of you who uh, were listening to my uh, uh, my my update, right? Okay, meet. August, mid August, uh, October period, I'll tell people, hey, watch out, watch out. We are reaching the 200 days, right? And also the 50 week moving average. So these are usually very strong support levels. So since then we have bounced off. And right now we are coming back to, okay, so let's look at daily chart. Huh? Okay, right? So you can see daily chart wise, we are back to the 100 day moving average over here. Okay, so this is 100 day, 100 day moving average. And we are going up, upward very nicely. Okay. Now, if you, oops, sorry, okay, right? If you look at the weekly chart, we are just off the 20 week moving average, right? So these are all very significant support levels. So in the midterm, I still think this is good TA. Uh, this is a good sign for the market. Uh, personally, I'm, look, I'm already entering a bit of core options here and there, right? But for those of you who are not familiar with options yet, it's okay, you can just look considering shares, okay? Now, let me look at uh, some of the stocks out there that I've been personally considering. So later, I'll probably just summarize all these uh, uh, into a presentation uh, slide later. I'll just type them down, okay? But now let's go through one by one first. Okay, number one, uh, of course, we have Apple, right? So you can see Apple on a daily chart, it looks very weak, right? It has broken below the uh, so-called the, the 200 day moving average but it has seems recapture the 200 day, right? So that's one good news. But if you look at the weekly chart, actually it is just bouncing off uh, the 100 week moving average. So that is actually quite positive, you know, right? That means very, very strong support over there. Overall, I quite like the Apple setup, especially, okay, let me just make it bigger here, especially in the weekly chart because you can see, 
right? Over here, we have the MACD, we have the Stochastics, we have also the uh, RSI as well, okay? All right, so these are the things that I really like to, to see over here, okay? All right, this is a good sign. Now, let's go and look at uh, other stocks. Uh, and other stocks that I really like, perhaps maybe not so much of uh, for you guys to look at in terms of uh, buying options, uh, but in terms of shares, okay? So this is none other than uh, AZO, AutoZone, right? This is a company that I really like. So what does AZO do? If you, do, if you don't know, you can just go and search for it. But basically, they do uh, automotive part sale. They don't sell cars, but they sell parts that maintains the car, right? So you can see on the daily chart, very nice bounce off the 200 week, sorry, 200, sorry, 100 day moving average, okay? Uh, now we are back down to the 20 week moving average. So you can see for AutoZone, right? You need to study the behavior of each of the stock that you're looking at, right? For AutoZone, it's quite clear that every time you come to the 20 week, right? More or less, it will find support. And now it's also at a nice support level. If you look at in terms of uh, the MACD over here, you can see MACD is good, right? Uh, you can also see that uh, the stochastic is good, right? The RSI is also good. So these are all quite positive sign, okay? All right, let's see. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, Ah, so the other one I really like is actually Costco. Okay, so Costco on the weekly chart, it looks like just off the 20 week. But if you look at the daily chart, it's just off the 50 day moving average. So these are actually quite strong support level. And you can see uh, very nice MACD, quite nice stochastics. A bit late, I would say, if you want to enter now, but still, it is still a fantastic company. So that's why when it comes to investing, right? Um, it's a bit different from trading because when you are trading, uh, very often you are asking the question like, hey, you know, um, uh, am I am I too late? You know, uh, can it can this be? Uh, if I'm very late, then should I go in now? If you go in now, then what's gonna happen? You know, but when you are dealing with a good company, even if you are going a bit later like this, right? So it has already gone up quite a quite a fair bit here. Right, you can see that the uh, MACD is already in the green region, uh, right? It's not the best already. Okay, let me just make this bigger for you. What? Oh, okay. Right, right. It's already in the green region. It's perhaps not the best position to start entering now. Right, stochastic has already gone up. RSI has already gone up. But because it's such a fantastic business, right? Okay, that you can kind of have that uh confidence uh, that hey, this is gonna do, uh, this is gonna do well lah. Uh. Right. Okay. So so let's look at let's look at numbers very quickly so that we have a sense uh, of what we are looking at. Okay. So AZO is the ticker symbol, right? So I really like to do what I call a, uh, you know, like a trade investor. Okay. <laughs> investor and trading combined together because when you trade, normally you just trade a stock without looking at fundamentals, and it is quite scary when, uh, the price drop and you didn't get out in time. Let's say even if you set a, uh. What do you do? Uh? You set a stop loss, right? You may not get it, right? Then you feel like, oh, crap, I'm still stuck in the position. But if you trade on a stock that you really like, right? So for example, if let's say I just buy uh, Costco shares now. And even if I forget to get out, uh, don't worry, right? My safety net is called fundamental analysis, right? So let's look at um, Costco. Okay, so if you look at income, uh, wow, this guy, the income always increasing, right? Uh, if you look at cash flow, operating cash flow, uh, a bit weaker in the last year, but otherwise it's still increasing quite nicely. Okay, so if I just look over here, right? So last two years a bit lower, but other than, other than that, it's still quite okay, right? Free cash flow, also very healthy over here. Okay, if you look at ratios wise, now this is definitely not a super cheap stock uh, per se, right? So this is not Costco, this is AutoZone, by the way, okay? Right, so if you look at PE ratio, it's actually on the higher end of the stick, uh, on the higher end of the stick, right? If you look at price to book, uh, it's never going to be positive. Then you'll be wondering, hey, why, uh, Pete? This company got no shareholder equity, you know, cannot buy. Uh. Okay, so you need to look at why they don't have shareholder holder equity. Now, I don't have the time to explain this to you uh, in details, but in short, this company, what they do is they take all their earnings, right? And they do uh, this thing called uh, buyback, right? They do share buyback, okay? So when they spend all their money doing share buyback, right? Guess what? Then they don't have shareholder equity, <laughs> okay? Right? But where the equity goes to? The equity goes into your share price. So if you remember recently, Apple, when they did announce a very huge uh, share buyback, actually the price actually went up, okay? All right? So uh, that's AutoZone. Uh, uh, let's look at uh, another stock. Okay, let's look at Costco for you also. Okay, sorry, sorry. Look at Costco, ah. Uh. Okay, 
So let's look at Costco, right? So if you look at cash flow, Costco cash flow is super strong. Okay. In fact, during COVID, it was the period it shine. Okay. Then after COVID, it dipped a little bit, but now it's back up. Eleven billion dollars of operating cash flow. Insane numbers here. Okay. Um, if you look at income, income going in, net income has always been upwards, right? If you look at gross profit margin, actually a lot of people uh, thought that Costco is not a high margin business. It's actually not too bad, no. Right, it's actually not too bad. If you look at uh, Amazon and whatnot, right, actually this number is a lot lower. Okay, so for Costco, it's very different. They don't go for high margin, but what they do is they go for low margin but high volume business. Right, in fact, I think most of you all already know a, a good percentage uh, of their revenue uh, actually come from membership. Right, to shop in Costco, you need to be a member as well. Okay, okay, uh, I think if I talk about Costco, there'll be another video already. Uh. Okay, so <laughs> let's continue. All right, uh, let me just talk about some uh, really, really nice uh, trades that I'm looking at right now. Uh, another one that I really like previously, I mentioned before, is housing, right? So I really like the housing sector at this point in time. Uh, it's more of a macro picture, not so much of fundamentals, although their fundamentals is not too bad. Okay, so let, let me just show you my fundamentals first. Uh. So this company is known as DR Hortons. If you go and Google them, they are one of the largest uh, home builder in the US. Okay, so you can see revenue, upward climb, uh, income, right, also upward climb. Only recently dip a little bit, but otherwise also pretty solid. Cash flow, very, very solid cash flow, especially last year they have a crazy amount of cash flow. Okay, but I wouldn't take this one as the uh, benchmark. Okay, I think this is a once off, uh, to be very honest. Okay, so if you look at overall ratios, if you look at PE ratios, price to book ratio, uh, EV, EB, it is not expensive at all, right? It is not expensive at all. And this is a really good business, uh, very well managed, okay? So if you look at DR Hortons right now, very nice bounce off the 100-day uh, moving average over here. Oops. Right, let me just get the cursor back. Huh? Okay, 100-day moving average over here. If you look at uh, the weeks, all right, 20 weeks moving average, very, very nice support over here, right? This is very nice TA setup. Okay, I cannot overemphasize that. Yeah, let me change to red. Uh. Is red better? Uh, maybe red is more, more, more sharp. Uh. Okay, can. All right. So uh, that's one. How about I give you one? Ah, another one. Okay, I don't know whether uh, you guys use this brand. Uh. I personally like this brand a lot, personally. Okay, uh, and that is none other than Lulu Lemon. Okay, I don't know whether you call it Lulu Lemon, Lulu Lemon, or whatever. Okay, but <laughs> this is a company that my wife just can't get enough of. She raves about this company. Uh, in fact, the previous time during this period when I go for Berkshire AGM, right? Uh, the only thing she asked me to buy back uh, is not the Berkshire chocolate, you know, seas candies or whatever. No, no, no. She said, can you get me some <laughs> Lululemon items, okay? So I bought her pants and tops. So Lululemon is basically what they call uh, athletic leisure wear, right? Now, they started off with yoga pants, but this is also a very, very interesting business, okay? So if you look at TA, uh, daily chart looks really bad because recently they had a earnings and uh, there was a downward revision in uh, forecast, right? So there was a really bad dip. And then after that, it continues to dip, you know, right? But if you look at the weekly chart, that's where it gets interesting. Because every time when I see a dip like this happen, right? I always ask myself, why did it stop here? You know, like why, why, why not lower, right? Because if it's such a bad business, why not just drop all the way, lah, right? And this is a very high per share value kind of company, right? So technically, if people panic, those who don't understand what is price per share versus value per share, then they'll just sell. They'll say, wow, 300 per share is very expensive. They'll sell it to lower. But you can see that it has found very, very strong support here at the uh, 200 week moving average, right? 200 week moving average. So I really like the business. Um, if you look at Lululemon financially, okay, right? So let's look at uh, income, okay? So you can see their, their net income actually has been steadily increasing. Although it's a bit choppy, I must admit, but it is steadily increasing. You just look at this, okay? It is quite clear. Uh, if you look at free cash flow, last year they had a very, very good free cash flow, okay? So you notice that 2022, their free cash flow really dipped down quite a fair bit. Uh, that is because their net income was not as high. So by the time they minus off, and they have a one-off uh, activity that they had to minus off, right? So... With that, then that really drops the free cash flow. But otherwise, actually the free cash flow uh, is actually quite healthy over here. Right? So overall, if you look at valuations, uh, right now P ratio is not high at all. Uh, price to book is also not very high, but although I wouldn't say it's the lowest. 
but it's a fairly good business. Why do I say that? Because when you look at these three indicators, okay, so when you, when you look at business efficiency, right, there's no other indicators you really need uh, other than this, uh, this view, right? In fact, Warren Buffett always talk about uh, operator earnings, right? The operating earnings. It is revolving around these three indicators. So return on equity, return on asset, return on invested income. And you can see this is a business that returns you 42% return on equity, 25% return on asset, and 26% return on invested capital. Okay, now to give you a sense of uh, how good this business is, right? if we just take another business that potentially has very, very good uh, returns as well, okay, uh, that would be Apple, right? So if you remember Apple, okay, so we remember this one first, uh, the ROE here is like, 40, sorry, 4, 40%, 25 for ROA, ROIC is 27, okay. So if you look at Apple, where is it? Okay, other than ROE, can you see that the ROA, ROIC is something that, hey, is very similar, you know. But can you imagine, that is a apparel brand, you know, they sell hard items, uh, whereas Apple is a technology business. Right. So don't get me wrong. I also think Apple is a very good business, but I'm just saying that, hey, it makes Lulu Lemon look like a tech company having this type of uh, returns. Okay. Right. So uh, this is a business that I personally really like. Okay. I think this is quite solid as well. Okay. Let me just write them down uh, before I forget. Uh. Okay. Okay. So, so these are what I call SOS. What is SOS? SOS is stock on spotlight. <laughs> okay. Right, so these are the stocks that I will put into my watch list if I, there's something I want to do. Right, for example, just now I talk about Apple. We have AutoZone. Okay, let me change the color. I hate this like grayish thing. If anybody knows how I can default make uh, Google Sheet not give me a gray font but a black font, I will deeply appreciate it. Okay, <laughs> right. Okay, we have Costco. Uh, we talk about DHI. Right, uh, we also talk about Lulu Lemon. Okay, right. Um, the other one I want to talk about is actually, uh, uh, FICO. Okay, so what is FICO? Let's go and look at FICO first. So FICO is basically the, uh, company that rates how credible you are financially in the US as a personal, uh, personal finance, right? So they always talk about, oh, you know, I have a FICO score of what, 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 what. So basically you, whether your rating is good enough. Okay, so if you see over here, FICO just bounced off the 200-day moving average. Very, very nice, right? Um, the support here at the 50-week moving average, also pretty solid, right? This is very, very good TA. Uh, could be better, but this is as good, just about as good as it gets really, okay? <laughs> right? So I really like this. Um, so that's FICO. Another one that I want to share with you very quickly before we go off. Uh, let me see where any other things are before we go off. Okay, I think those are about it. Uh, okay, if I got time, I, I go through more. Lah. But let me just go through AMD first. So AMD, uh, I would say it's like the little brother of uh, NVIDIA. And I've been telling uh, some of the students who jump on a call with me, right, is that, you know, right now when you look at NVIDIA, it's like, wow, through the roof, through the roof, keep on going, keep on going. But at the end of the day, you must ask yourself, is this a winner-take-all market? Right? Is this a market that NVIDIA will supply everybody? And the answer is, just like EV, no, right? Tesla looks like it was the front runner of EV, but right now, uh, guess what? The secondary tier like BYD, uh, like uh, Xpeng, all these are actually doing not too bad, you know, right? So same for Semicon, right? Nvidia is definitely the top dog, but the second, third tier, you know, could also benefit from. In fact, right now there's a supply problem, right? There's not enough Nvidia chips to go around. So guess what? Are the data centers just gonna sit there idle and just wait for the chips to come in? Probably not, right? They'll say, hey, if I can't buy the uh, NVIDIA chip, let me go and buy some AMD chip. So they might do that, you know, right? And we do see that in the number of AMD that is increasing. So if you look at TA-wise, we are now at a very nice moment, 200-day moving average, 50-week moving average. Very, very nice TA set over here. Even if you look at the weekly chart, although this may need a bit more development, but overall, it is still a really nice uh, chart for AMD as well. Okay, so I really like AMD. Um, another one, let me just uh, put this put this down. Another one that I really like uh, that I can share with you guys. Let me think. Uh, which one is really... Ah, okay. So right now it's Berkshire season. Uh. Okay, so actually Berkshire Hathaway is not too bad. Okay, right. So these are strong companies, uh, by the way. So I don't talk about weak companies uh, in, this, in this part of the video. Okay, I just talk about strong companies. No speculation here. 
uh, I just want to provide you with a better TA moment to buy these strong companies. So even if you miss it by a little bit, I think it's fine. Okay. Now, Berkshire Hathaway, 100 day moving average, 20 week moving average, very, very strong support over here. Overall, this is a company that just keeps on paying you uh, so-called returns, uh, pays you dividend, not in the form of dividend, but pays you returns, right? So recently, uh, in the Berkshire Hathaway meeting, I think Buffett himself said that they have sold some Apple. They have risen their cash level to about 182 or $189 billion, right? So a lot of people get very worried like, oh, is Warren Buffett not investing? Actually not, right? Recently in my, uh, in my email newsletter, I did talk about why Warren Buffett is raising cash and why he's not using it, right? Uh, the short answer is very simple. He's such a big portfolio, right? For him to deploy, it must be a reasonably big investment as well, right? So think about it. If he were to just deploy like uh, 10% of these, uh, it's already 18 billion, you know. That is easily something like maybe half of a mid-sized company, okay, <laughs> right? Or he will end up just a uh, major share ownership of uh, some large company as well. So it is not so easy for him to deploy. He wouldn't deploy like one, two billion here and there. It really doesn't make sense. So only big businesses, for example, recently he did investment in uh, Japan, right? Where he bought the trading houses. Each of them, he could deploy 10 to $15 billion. Only that kind of investment makes sense. So what it means is that a lot of the smaller, potentially more lucrative opportunities, right, uh, would be missed by Warren Buffett. Okay, Warren Buffett himself said before, right, if he and Charlie were to manage something like a 10 million portfolio or even a 10 billion portfolio, he will be very certain that the returns he gets will be very different from what Berkshire is getting right now. Okay, so it doesn't mean that you have to exactly follow what Warren Buffett does, but it's important to understand the context why he is raising so much cash at this point in time. Okay, but nevertheless, Berkshire right now looks nice. Uh, in terms of valuation, okay, let me just take a quick look. I haven't actually looked at the valuation yet. Huh? Okay, so the valuation uh, yardstick that uh, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger use in themselves is actually price to book, right? And they always say when it comes down to price to book close to 1.3, that's when they will buy. Okay, so currently it's not really that cheap yet. It's about 1.53, right? The cheap moments were uh, basically 2013 and 2021. So if you look back at the chart, 2013, right, this period, I, I think this period was quite cheap. And 2021, maybe this period was quite cheap. Okay, right. So just take note, PB ratio doesn't mean that the price is definitely going to be lower uh, than before. It could be because they increased the book value as well, right? So in this case, for example, you see 2023 and uh, and 2022, although 2020, oh, sorry, 2021 have similar price to book ratio, but the actual price is very different, right? 2023 is over this period, uh, this period, 2023, right? 2022 is this period, right? The price is not exactly the same. Why? Because the book value changed, okay? All right, so let's go to other stocks. Okay, since we're in the B category, I talk about Baba, okay? Uh, this is a stock that gave a lot of people a lot of pain, a lot of angst, <laughs> okay? But it's a very strong business. So I think right now, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to say too early that this is the moment that Baba will shoot up, but we did see uh, for the first time on a daily chart, it went above the 200-day moving average. So that is, that is definitely number one. Okay. Uh, number two, on the weekly chart, you can see that Baba really forms the support here. Really. It doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't drop any any further than, than it we will, right? So this is something that I always watch out for because I want to know, hey, w can, can this drop deep, deeper than that, right? If it were to drop deeper, is there something I need to do, right? <laughs> something I need to adjust towards. I need to make sure that I don't, I don't, I don't get trapped into it. And right now, all I see for right now, lah, okay, at least just for this moment, right, is that hey, it's pretty solid. Okay, um, I I don't think there's any big problem. It's heading upwards. The support is quite clear, right? And I think right now the valuation is fantastic. Right, I can't think of a, to be honest, I can't think of a better valuation at this point in time. Okay, right. So if you if you look at it, I think if you haven't buy into it, this might be some some opportunities set. Right, I'm thinking of accumulating a little bit here and there. Okay, now uh, let's go into other stocks. Let me see ah, uh, what else ah. Okay, so I like to buy stocks that you know that are uh, very very uh, simple to understand. For example, Home Depot. Okay. Home Depot, if you don't know, basically they are like IKEA, but they do everything in a much larger scale in the US. Okay, so they sell home goods. Lah. Okay, so if, let, let me just bring you all there uh, if you don't know where, what is Home Depot. Okay, so a lot of times people say, AP, what does this company do? Uh? Hey, 
uh, eh, why, why I can't go there? <laughs> What's wrong? Okay, right, so you can read here, like, you can just see like, they sell tools, construction, and whatnot. Okay, it's a home improvement. It's the largest home improvement uh, retailer in the US uh, at this moment. Okay, so this is, this is what uh, it is doing in terms of numbers. Let's just take a look at numbers very quickly. Okay, right, so if you look at numbers, you can see that this guy has, uh, let me look at cash flow, huh? right, operating cash flow, keep on heading upwards, right? There's a bit of fluctuation here and there, but generally upwards, okay? Uh, ratios wise, I would say now, um, perhaps not the cheapest, maybe our average pricing, right? Price to book also, uh, a bit hard to use price to book for this company. But if you look at price to cash flow, I would say it's maybe fair to slightly undervalued, right? Now you'll notice that I'm not using DCF at this moment. Uh, why? Because there's too many things to consider for this year, in my opinion, right? You need to get your discount rate right. You need to think about what's your growth rate. So many things, right? You just change one little number, everything changed. So I don't really like to use such a precise tool for something that is actually very, very blunt, right? Valuation to me is never a single number. It is always a range. Why? Because even if you go and ask the CEO of Home Depot today, uh, hey, what's the value of Home Depot per share? he or she can't really tell you the exact number. I'm very, very certain, right? So if they, even if the CEO can't tell you a number, then you as an investor who is not operating a business on a daily basis, uh, um, how confident are you that you can come up with a specific number, right? So while, it, while DCF is very useful to give you a single number, it looks like very powerful, very precise, but uh, I think Charlie Munger said this, or is it Warren Buffett? I can't remember, but he says, you know, it is much better to be uh, approximately correct than to be precisely wrong. Right, so I don't want to be so precise, but yeah, I get a wrong number over here. Okay, uh, let's see if there are other stocks that we are looking at. Okay, ah, okay, so just give you guys, eh, did I miss any? Uh? Okay, put Home Depot here. Okay, last one. Uh, let's talk about another company that is very similar to FICO, uh, and that is MSCI. So MSCI, what do they do? Do you know whenever you look at uh, companies uh, that gives you your, your indexes and whatnot, uh, basically they all come from MSCI. Right, so they are they are providing uh, all these index to for people to match up and everything, right? So they have been around for a long time. This is a very very uh, old business, and recently during one of the earnings, right? Okay, once again due to lower forecast, boom, prom, 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 prom. Okay, drop a lot. But if you look at the weekly chart, whoo, whoo, this is exciting, right? This stock, okay, uh, seldom go below the 200 week moving average. I would say almost never. Maybe it has, but I can't, I can't see it yet. Okay. So over here, I look at this, I'm like, wow, this is a quite an interesting, quite an interesting opportunity, right? So if I look over here, all the support lines, so I believe this will be the same as well. Uh, in terms of MACD is great. Okay. Let me just bring up MACD. Stochastics is good. RSI is good as well. So this is a great business. Right, so for those of you who don't know what to buy, what to do, okay, right, this is something to look at. Okay, um, before I go off, I just want to touch on a little bit about something that I really like, which is uh, oil and gas. Okay, so let's go into oil and gas. Ah, okay, so oil and gas, you can see here XLE, right? Uh, we have come down quite a fair bit on a daily chart, right? So it was down, up, down, up. Okay, so now it's up here. And we are coming down, but you can see the TA here shows very nice support at the, uh, let me just make this bigger. Uh, what is this? Okay. At the 50 week moving average, right? I love it. I love this. Okay. Uh, we are coming down to the 20 day, move, uh, 20 week moving average. So, 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 this is 50 day, this is 20 week. Sometimes, you know, when I talk about days and weekdays, I get very confused. Uh. Okay. So, so just remember below is weekly chart. Okay. Over here, this is weekly chart. All right. And above here, this is daily chart. Okay, right. Okay, so you can see this is also at the support level over here. Right, very, very nice. Right. Overall, oil supply is still very tight. Uh, of course, oil is definitely not a long-term investment. It's meant to be a trade. And I think right now it's still pretty solid, right? If I were to dip some more, maybe I'll re-enter re my XLE, right? So you can see XLE always have these waves, uh, right? But maybe about like half a year wave. So right now, it's also coming to about half a year. Right now we are going down right? Maybe it will reach the bottom, maybe somewhere in September, right? So just take note of this. Okay. 
All right. Okay, so that's all I wanted to share with you guys. Let me know what are your thoughts. Interestingly, right now, when everybody says the market is very high, actually, you look at the technical analysis side of the house, right? There are lots of opportunity sets uh, that's coming up. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions or any stocks that you want me to uh, research on to, to share more, right? I hope you all like this kind of format. I just put it out into two so that I don't have to keep changing the slides. Uh, I know it takes a bit of getting used to as well, but I think this is the best way, right, uh, to show you guys how I personally do my very, very quick and dirty uh, daily, you know, stock checkup, right? To find out which stock is worth looking at, which stock I can enter into. And that's it. You know, you don't need to spend a lot of time, half an hour to one hour. I think that is more than enough, right? And you don't have to do as many stocks as I do. I'm going through 50 over stocks. Maybe for you uh, at a retail level, you can do about 10 to 15. You should take even lesser time as well, okay? The thing about investing is that it's not about you spending the most time. It's about you Spending time where it truly matters. That means understanding that you firstly find the great businesses, use your technical analysis, and really basically is follow your rules, whether you're investing or trading, whether you need to cut loss or you need to take profit, right? That's something that's very crucial. Okay, so that's all I want to share with you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or any stocks you want me to look at, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.